separable differential equations. Now, for those who are in maybe a Calculus AB or Calculus 1 class, this is also what we would intro a differential equations class with, separable differential equations. Differential equations, obviously, you're going to then work towards the inseparable side of differential equations, but we intro these in like a calculus one or an AB calculus class in high school level. So I'm going to work through some examples today. If this is the first time you're seeing my face, hi, my name's Dr. Marissa May. I'm on a mission to help students feel successful in their math class by providing resources such as this video to help you see examples of concepts in an easy to understand method. So if there are other topics you'd like to see, feel free to leave me a comment below and I will put that on my to-do list. That way you get the resources you need. And uh, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Then that way you get notification every time a new video is posted. So let's jump right in. We're going to look at finding the general solution and then we'll turn our attention to finding the particular solution because we are beginning an initial value. So let's start with the differential equation here. Um, dy dx equals 6x squared plus 6x plus 2. Now the first thing, if they are separable, then what that means is that we want to separate the variables. We want all the y's on one side, we want all the x's on the other side. So that's pretty simple here if we'll multiply by dx. We do this because then we want to integrate both sides. So our next step then is to integrate both sides here. The, the left side's pretty simple, right? The integral of dy is just y. And then you could integrate the right side term by term. So that would be 2x cubed plus 3x squared plus 2x. And then the general solution includes a constant of integration. Now, found the general solution, now we want to find the particular solution. That comes from our initial value. So we're being told that when x is negative 1, y is 2. So we'll make those substitutions. We'll put 2 in for y. We'll put negative 1 in for x. And we'll solve. Okay, so negative 1 cubed is negative 1 times 2 gives me negative 2 plus 3 plus negative 2 plus C. And so 2 equals, let's see, that's 1 plus negative 2 gives me negative 1, so C is 3. So our final particular solution, we're going to come back to our equation that we found, our general solution, and now we know what the value of C is. We know it's 3. And that's my answer here. Okay, we'll do the same thing for number two. Number two, we're going to separate the variables. Ugh, it looks, looks a little bit more difficult, doesn't it? Okay, so we'll separate our variables first. We've got this fraction. Now, I'm going to rewrite the denominator as 2 times x to the 1 half. I think that's going to be more user-friendly for us. And before I take the antiderivative of both sides, I think it's wise to go ahead and split these into two separate fractions. And then to simplify, okay? Remember, a lot of our simplifying steps are meant to make the calculus easier. And so we do a little bit of algebra when we can. So I'm going to rewrite this as 1 half x to the negative 1 half plus 6x. And now I'm going to integrate. So the antiderivative of the left is just y. Then I've got 1 half times x to the 1 half divided by 1 half plus 3x squared plus c. Now I'm going to flip this 1 half and multiply, which is going to give me just a 1 in front. So I've got x to the 1 half plus 3x squared plus c. Now we're ready to use our initial value when x is 0, y is 2. So that makes it pretty easy when x is 0 we get that y is 2. 
So our final answer then becomes y equals x to the 1 half plus 3x squared plus 2. All right, now let's jump into a couple of examples that have y's in the right side where we really focus on the separating of the variables. So let's do that. I like to think of this as cross multiplying. So I get 2y dy equals x squared plus 2x times dx. And everything looks really good cleaned up. So I'll go ahead and take the integral of both sides. That gives me y squared equals one third x cubed plus x squared plus c. Now you may be asking yourself, why didn't we use a plus c on the left side and on the right side? Well, I want you to realize that a plus c on the left side combined with a plus c on the right side is just a plus c on either side. It's just a different constant. So putting it on one side or the other is, um, is acceptable, and you can choose which side you want to put it on. Now I'm going to use uh, my initial point when x is 0, y is 2. And so that gives me 4 equals C. So I've got Y squared equals 1 third X cubed plus X squared plus 4. I'm not going to solve for Y on this problem because if I do, I have to take the square root. Then I've got to consider plus or minus the square root. But if I leave it as a Y squared, I don't have to worry about that at all. And a lot of times when we get into separable differential equations, we start to deal with things that aren't functions. And so totally acceptable to leave it just as is. Okay, let's um, cross multiply here again. So I've got y dy equals x plus 2 dx. And I'm ready to go ahead and take the integral of both sides. So the antiderivative of y dy is 1 half y squared equals 1 half x squared plus 2x plus c. Now let's plug in our initial point. When x is 1, y is negative 3. And then we'll solve for c. So negative 3 squared is 9. So I've got 9 halves equals 1 half plus 2 plus c. So subtract the one half here gives you eight halves or four. And so C equals two. So come back to your initial um, antiderivative, your general solution. And we'll put in two for C. Now because the half in front of the Y squared, it is okay to go ahead and multiply the whole equation by two. before you give your final answer. Okay, let's look at a few more then. Okay, let's separate the variables here. All right, so I'm gonna multiply by the dx first. And then I'm going to divide by this parentheses. Now, I'm going to write it like this, though, because I want it to stand out just a little bit because I want you to be able to see the connections I'm going to make. Okay, now I'm going to take the antiderivative of both sides. Okay, now the antiderivative of 1 over y minus 2 is the ln, the natural log, of y minus 2 with absolute values. Okay, that's a stretch, right? But I want you to think about if you had this and you took the derivative, the derivative would be 1 over y minus 2. Now, if we integrate the other side, I get 1 fifth x to the fifth plus c. I still need the absolute values because I can't guarantee this is going to be positive. Now, I want to try to solve for y. So I'm going to convert this to an exponential. Remember, the ln has a base of e. So when you write that as an exponential, you say e to this power 
equals what's inside. Now I can drop the absolute values at this point because now I can guarantee you e to some power is going to be positive. Now let's dissect this just a little bit, okay? I want you to think about when we add exponents. We add exponents when we are multiplying. So I'm going to rewrite this as a multiplication. Now e to a constant is just a constant. So I'm going to write this as a constant times one e to the one fifth x to the fifth. And then I'm going to move the two over. Okay, that's a lot, but it is when, where we see a lot in differential equations because we want to get to that exponential. Now we're going to use our initial point. We're zero, zero. So we're going to put in zero for y and zero for x. So that's going to give me zero equals e to the zero is one. So that's, so I got one times c. So c equals negative two. So I'm going to put that value back into this equation. And there's my particular solution, we call it. OK, let's do one more like that, because I think you're going to feel more confident the more we do with that. Let's go ahead. Um, I'm going to cross multiply here. Um, just because I have both of them going on. I know it doesn't accomplish the separating of variables, but it kind of gets everything, the fractions gone. Okay, now I'm going to divide by the y minus 1. I'll write it just like I did last time. And then I'm going to divide by the x squared. Okay, now I'm, uh, let me do one more rewrite. I want to rewrite that 1 over x squared as x to the negative 2. Okay, and now I'm ready to take the antiderivative. Okay, so the antiderivative of 1 over y minus 1 is the ln of the absolute value of y minus 1. And the antiderivative of e to the negative 2 would be negative 1 over x plus c. Okay, again, let's convert it to an exponential. So I've got e to the negative 1 over x plus c equals the y minus 1. Remember, I can drop the absolute values at this point because I can guarantee you e to the negative 1 over x plus c is positive. Then I can rewrite this addition as multiplication. So I've got e to the negative 1 over x times e to the c. Remember, e to the c is just a number. So I've got c e to the negative 1 over x. And then we add the 1. OK, at this point, I'm ready to plug in my value. When x is 2, um, y is 0. So 0 equals c e to the negative 1 half plus 1. So we'll subtract 1. And then let's rewrite that as c over e to the 1 half. And then we can multiply on the other side by it. So I've got c equals negative e to the 1 half. Let's substitute that in here. I've got y equals negative e to the 1 half times e to the negative 1 over x plus c. Oops, sorry, plus 1. Ooh, when we multiply, we add exponents. So we've got negative e to the negative 1 over x plus a half plus 1. And I know it doesn't look pretty, but that's what we get. Okay? You're gonna, your tolerance for non-pretty answers is going to go up with these differential equations. And so I hope that helps. 
Um, I do want to share with you, and I will link the solution to it below, the 2000 um, AB question number six is a great one to practice with on this concept because I want you to be able to see um, how it's asked, especially if you're an AP student and you're needing to practice those questions. But I will put the solutions link down below. That way you can take a look at it. And I hope that helps. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. I'd be happy to make more videos of another topic, something that you need help with. Just please let me know in the comments below. And uh, thanks for watching. Bye for now.